one of Porsche's hidden gems, and a future classic is the 2012 Cayman R. With razor-sharp steering and handling, it's a true driver's car, made for the enthusiast that likes a spirited drive on their favorite canyon road. Yet also discreet enough and manageable enough as a daily driver. Porsche deliberately kept his power band below that of the iconic 911, yet that won't stop it out handling one on the twisty back roads. So the car I'm driving today is a 2012 Cayman R. Actually belongs to my buddy Raj, who's camera shy, otherwise he'd be sat right there. But Raj is one of those guys, you know, he's a bit of a hipster. He's got great taste in most things, art, and especially cars. And he always likes his cars black, black. So that's enough about Raj. The Cayman R, the one I'm driving today, the 2012, built on the 987.2 platform, is the last generation of the 987, which is the second generation of the Boxster platform. The Cayman R debuted at the LA Auto Show in 2010. I was there, I remember it pretty clearly. That debut car was a lime green color, which sort of stunned the audience because it was the first time Porsche had used the iconic R letter, which really dates back to the 1967 911R of which they made 20. It was the first time Porsche had pulled that R lettering out of the archive and put it on a Porsche, but not a 911. So this time though, you gotta remember, the Cayman is still the underdog. Porsche knows it can really outhandle the 911, but they don't want it to supersede, you know, the iconic 911 that's been in production currently in 60 years. And you gotta remember, the Cayman GT4, that didn't debut till four years after the R in 2016. And today's current heavyweight, the Cayman GT4 RS, which as you know, didn't come out till 2022. So the Cayman R is Porsche's first real performance Cayman on the next level of the Cayman S. Porsche made 621 of them for the whole world. I believe it was 575 of them made it to the US. Half of them were manual, half of them were PDK. So the greatest thing about the Cayman R is its agility. It doesn't have a ton of power, but it's sharp and nimble, and it weighs under 3,000 pounds. So ultimately, the Cayman is the coupe version of the Boxster. The Boxster debuted in 1996, and it had been 20 years since the 914, Porsche's last mid-engine sports production car. But it wasn't until 2005 that the Boxster became a coupe, and Porsche called it a Cayman. The Cayman R basically is the race version of the Cayman Coupe. But really, the Cayman is more about its agility, its directness, its center of gravity. You've got to remember, this being a mid-engine car, it doesn't have the big pendulum weight swinging out the back end like the 911 is. You know, the center rotation is more based around the middle. You've got to remember, the engine's like six inch behind my shoulder right there, inside the car. But what I'm loving about this Cayman R straight away, having driven GT4s and GT4 RSs, is it's pretty stealth. It's not this look at me, Cayman GT4 RS with the big wing and 
the noisy intake and the diffuser and the splitter it seems to be like the perfect combination of at this speed it's not even loud Built on the box, the platform, the Cayman made its debut in 2005 in coupe form as a Cayman S. But this is a 2012 Cayman R. First time Porsche had ever put an R letter on anything other than the 67 911R. The Cayman R is the sport version or the race version of the Cayman S. 10 millimeters lower, got 330 horsepower from the 3.4 liter motor and 270 foot pound of torque, which by today's standard is not a ton, but it's more than enough. And aesthetically, what I love about the Cayman R, it's a car that's actually on my wish list. It doesn't have any really big look at me elements like the GT4 or GT4 RS does. It's a swoopy silhouette influenced no doubt by the 550 Spider and the 904. We're rolling on 19 inch wheels. We do have the throwback Rocker R inspired strobe stripe and color coded mirrors and inlets here. But what I love about the silhouette is this back end, the rear arch from the B pier pillar forward or backwards I should say into the hatchback and ending at the fixed rear wing. It's just a swoopy, sexy silhouette. It's not mega wide. Driving it around LA, it feels taut and nimble and compact, which is all you really need from a sports car, especially one that weighs under 3,000 pounds and has 330 horsepower mounted to a six-speed transmission with some sticky rubber and some really big, big stopping brakes with vented rotors. It's probably time that we go put the pedal to the metal and see how it is on this twisty road. All right, here we go. Key on the left, bro, as always, with all Porsche racing inspired cars right there. There's a lot to be said about the Cayman R. Mid-engine platform, 330 horsepower, stealth compared to its bigger brothers, the GT4 and GT4 RS. This is the original asphalt package, streamlined, not over fussy. But highly capable. Sort of drama free in essence, unlike its big brother, the 911, which does tend to rotate more with that big mass over the rear end. The Cayman's really well balanced, mid engine layout, easy to give a little bit of left foot brake coming here to stabilize it, and just sort of pivots from the center, kind of right, right where we're sat. This whole section's like third, fourth gear. I do have the exhaust loud pipe on. I don't quite know how that bypass works. I suppose there's something to be said for possibly it having a bit more power, because you do sort of have to scream the nuts off it. A bit more power without going crazy with all the aero that his big brother has. You've got to pick your way through here. Like I always say, it's a balance. of throttle input, steering input, dab of the brake when need be. That's 6,000 RPM. It's pushing up to seven, there's seven. It's easy to heel and toe, real easy to left foot brake in it. And just roll back on the throttle. This is usable power. 
you know, 330. It's about really all you need in a sub 3,000 pound car, unless you want to get a little bit more greedy and have it here. You know, that sort of mid range towards, you know, three quarter up the rev range, five to six. I find the gear ratios in this really pretty good. That was one of the bigger drawbacks with the GT4 was tall, basically, you know, third, fourth, fifth gear ratio. This seems more well suited in between the ratios. I do feel that having some seat time in the car on my wish list is always a good thing. That's the great thing about OPP, having the opportunity to drive other people's Porsches. You know, I've driven the GT4. I've driven the GT4 RS. Those cars feel really harsh in comparison to this. And yes, there's more sport race orientated, but I don't necessarily think they'd be much quicker on this particular road. Because ultimately it's a road that determines the speed, not so much the car itself. In a way, the Cayman R is rarer than its bigger brothers just purely based on volume of production. We always love a tunnel. The brakes are good on the Cayman. They give you confidence to brake later. section here, third gear all the way through, like a slalom course dance. Like threading the needle a little bit. time I spend in the Cayman R, the more it makes me think I want one. Which is always a good sign when you drive a car that's been on your wish list and it doesn't disappoint. I've driven cars on my wish list before and they have disappointed. But I'm happy to say the 2012 Cayman R is not disappointed. It does look pretty good in black too. gonna do now is find one for myself. Let me see if I can talk Raj into it. It's not the first time someone said hey take the keys and let me know how you like it and I ended up buying it. That was how I got my 993 so only time will tell. I'm gonna drop it a cog, press on though, get a few more miles, smiles and memorable moments under my belt here.